and welcome to Founder Focus, our new series where we interview the founders of the most exciting crypto projects at the moment. So today I'm joined by Eric Chen, CEO and co-founder of Injective Labs. So watch on to find out about what Injective Labs is all about, what they're building, and also any exciting news that they may have to share. So welcome to the show, Eric. How are you today? Great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on. So let's jump right into things. So can you tell us a little bit about your background and what led you to kind of start Injective? Yeah, so um, basically I found out about, you know, the entire industry and the space uh, as early as high school. Um, Kind of kept following it until like college where we were doing a lot more on the research side of things and uh, realized there was a quite of a strong connection between the and discipline I was going for, the track I was going for, and also like the industry itself. So it kind of uh, became a very natural marriage between like uh, the type of research that I was doing and also like uh, uh, providing value and like contributing to like uh, the high growth industry at the time. So basically later on worked as, you know, like a researcher and also a bit of a trader as well, just help out there here and there um, uh, uh, for, for like a fund based in New York. And then like, uh, uh, started Injective uh, quite uh, uh, quite soon after uh, with the Injective Labs. So we were just working on different types of uh, um, kind of like application layer toolkits. Um, and uh, later on, it very quickly re- uh, became, you know, obvious that, you know, we need to build like uh, infrastructure that's uh, going to be able to support, you know, a lot of financial related primitives and also uh, activities uh, because at a time there just weren't you know any type of scalable solutions that can s- support it without breaking like uh, some of the core axioms required for like uh, finance like uh, composability etc. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how like an injective came to be. It started off with a research paper around solving uh, front running and collision, utilizing like a pretty uh, interesting uh, you know cryptographic primitive, and now you know. Uh, evolving slowly over time into a decentralized uh, ecosystem um, that's building towards a blockchain uh, that's a sector-specific focus on financial applications. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's so interesting how it it didn't initially start off as, you know, solely a crypto project, right? It's so interesting that you found all these problems and then we thought, look, I can, you know, use cryptography to solve these problems, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think like uh, cryptography and, uh, you know, like a crypto or like blockchain um, is probably uh, the most uh, interwoven uh, type of like academic discipline versus like industry application. You get to see a lot of very, very exciting like uh, cryptographic primitives uh, coming into life and, uh, you know, being used and having, you know, very much uh, palpable impacts within a matter of like months uh, or years uh, versus like traditionally you would have to, you know, wait uh, decades uh, before like a certain like cryptographic primitive is being adopted or used uh, and approved by, I don't know, like NSA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for those who may not be familiar with the project, can you tell us a bit about what the goals are at Injective and what kind of sets you apart from other L1s out there? Yeah. So so for Injective case, it's uh, very much of a sector specific layer one blockchain built for finance. Uh, it's basically this uh, open interoperable layer one blockchain that focuses on powering the next generation of DeFi applications uh, that could include um, decentralized spot and derivatives exchange, uh, prediction markets, lending protocols, and much, much more. Uh, it's obviously built on top of, you know, like a variety of uh, SDKs uh, like Cosmos and utilizes uh, Tendermint based uh, proof of stake consensus mechanism. And a lot of the, you know, like the native uh, work that we've done allows for the infrastructure to provide uh, instant finality with uh, extremely fast performance at, you know, more than 25,000 plus trades per second. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. And um, so obviously you guys started in 2018, right? So can you tell us a bit about your journey to where you are now and any obstacles you faced and how you um, solved them? Oh God, where do I start? Um, <laughs> so basically uh, for, for Injective Labs case, it started off as like a um, kind of like a toolkit or like an application um, that resolves you know, some of the limitations within the DeFi space um, back in you know, the Ethereum ecosystem back in the day. Um, and actually, you know, it was very exciting to see the whole, you know, like DeFi landscape evolve because 
back then they don't have a term for what to call, you know, like all the financial applications in the space. And then there was like some like debates, et cetera. And that, that's when they landed on like the term DeFi. Um, and for our case, for Injective Labs, uh, it's to build, you know, like an exchange infrastructure uh, as like a, you know, scaling solution uh, uh, somewhat uh, for Ethereum that resolves a lot of front running MEV related issues. And very soon we quickly realized that, you know, um, uh, not only matching uh, has to ha happen, you know, like within the injective infrastructure settlement also has to happen within the injective infrastructure as well to provide or, you know, to, to create like a uh, robust like financial ecosystem for all these uh, applications and for all these utilities to thrive. And uh, that's when, you know, Injective slowly evolved into um, a layer one that allows for applications to host themselves that has a lot of the out-of-box uh, modules like, you know, the exchange module, the Oracle module, et cetera, that allows for, you know, almost uh, like a cheat code for these uh, applications to leverage uh, at, you know, always a lower cost than uh, any other blockchain, always at, you know, uh, a much higher safety than any other blockchain uh, in perpetuity. Um, and, uh, you know, powering the next generation of uh, DeFi applications that were not possible to be built before on, you know, the Ethereum ecosystem. And of course, a lot of obstacles, uh, you know, along the way, we had to, you know, build a lot of uh, core primitives and also like the core infrastructures that eventually, you know, like shapes up to be what Injective is today. Yeah, amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the, the ecosystem would agree with, you know, everything that you're doing, but say, I know like, you know, it's mostly for DeFi applications and everything, but what are your, let's say like top three, you know, most exciting use cases or projects out there that's building on Injective right now? Yeah. So, so for Injective Labs case, uh, it's not just about, you know, contributing to the, you know, uh, uh, core modules within uh, the Injective blockchain, right? It's also about building a lot of applications uh, on top of, uh, you know, the Injective ecosystem and, you know, contributing to Helix, contributing to Mito, contributing to a lot of those applications are, you know, are currently serving as a flagship of, uh, you know, its own verticals. So, you know, we certainly have a bias towards uh, those type of applications. And uh, I think there are certainly a, very, a lot of very, very exciting, like, uh, apps built by the ecosystem. Um, and honestly, like uh, for, for Injective's case, it's uh, meant to be a blockchain bill for finance, focus on like financial applications, but uh, it, you know, always had like a boom in terms of like NFT activities that, you know, we've always been surprised uh, with. And obviously a lot of very, very exciting um, uh, kind of like swap applications, AMM applications, uh, lending applications, and different types of, uh, you know, on-chain strategy and structural product applications like uh, Injera built by DojoSwap. Uh, et cetera. Um, and also a lot of, uh, you know, liquid staking derivative product uh, built by Hydro, et cetera. Those are all, you know, very, very exciting ecosystem projects built by very, very passionate teams. Yeah, amazing. And actually, can we go a little bit more into the Injective ecosystem in that case? So you know, how is Injective engaging with developers and, and users alike? Yeah, I think one of the very interesting part about uh, Injective Labs is that, you know, first of all, um, it contributes to applications directly. So it kind of eats its own dog food. Um, uh, it builds a lot of, you know, like core modules, contributes to a lot of, you know, like upgrades within a chain that are learning from, you know, first, uh, uh, you know, applications that were, you know, built uh, by us uh, during the process, we had a lot of learnings. And then, you know, uh, at the current, uh, you know, uh, state uh, for the past few years, been listening very extensively to all those uh, applications and, uh, you know, projects and to create all those uh, core modules to adjust the primitives to, you know, like optimize a lot of different features in service of, uh, you know, all these uh, projects and their feedbacks. So really the chain uh, itself is not necessarily um, um, trying to serve like a generalized uh, audience, um, thinking, you know, repeatedly about different types of uh, uh, edge cases uh, for, you know, uh, uh, all, all, all spectrum of like application verticals and, uh, you know, uh, kind of like viewing it or building it in a detached stance between, you know, like the core developers versus like the application developers, but rather it's uh, more of a very, very strong hybrid and marriage uh, where the application developers um, uh, build up a lot of, uh, you know, very, very amazing contracts or, you know, uh, decentralized apps. And that kind of uh, leads to a, a collaborative effort between the core developers to, you know, change up the modules, to upgrade uh, different features, to, you know, incorporate different types of uh, requests into the core chain itself. And 
become a very, very much of a collaborative and iterative uh, uh, platform. So I think this is why, you know, um, uh, Injective is so unique and uh, so special in a way where, you know, it's a more of a collaborative process where, you know, the application developers shape what the blockchain looks like. And, um, you know, Injective gets to do this, not because, uh, you know, it's something that, you know, everyone decided to do, but rather because, you know, Injective uh, has been cemented as, you know, focusing uh, exclusively uh, um, in like a sector specific way towards financial applications. So anything that aligns with that vertical, it allows them to take a stance and, you know, like uh, 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 optimize for it. Yeah, amazing. And to go more into the collaboration side of things. So does that have anything to do with, I saw um, on your X that, you know, you have an ambassadors program. So could you talk a bit about that as well? Yeah, that's been a very, very successful program, far you know, exceeding like all of our expectations. But you know, it's a it's a effort you know done by the foundation and a lot of stakeholders within the injective ecosystem. Uh, they came together to you know form kind of like this uh, ambassadorship uh, program where you know all the community members that are passionate about the ecosystem can um, kind of work through the ranks to kind of like synergize their efforts to really coordinate. Um, 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 you know, like uh, what they can support all their value adds and to do so in like a, you know, a, a ambassador system where, you know, if you can contribute it in like a social way or you can contribute it in like a, you know, uh, um, activity way or you can contribute via, you know, like evangelizing, uh, you'll be, uh, first of all, you know, like uh, uh, rewarded proportional to your uh, contribution by, you know, uh, elevating through ranks from, you know, like night to pretty much godhood, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and then like, uh, you know, like uh, um, basically because Injective is financial focused, um, it allows them to, you know, all uh, kind of synergize and kind of align on like the same message that they want to bring to like the greater audience uh, and uh, basically get, uh, get to make sure that everyone uh, do what they do best and uh, um, bring the ecosystem forward in a highly, you know, uh, coordinated way. Yeah, amazing. I just, yeah, it's really inspiring that you guys, you know, really listen to your community and actually deploy, you know, what the community wants. So that's great. <laughs> oh, honestly, it's all like, uh, it's all thanks to, you know, the thousands of ambassadors that are like working tirelessly to bring the ecosystem forward and, uh, you know, uh, voice their opinions about like where the ecosystem should evolve, uh, where the application vertical uh, should be, you know, like emphasized. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, going forward, I know um, another thing that I saw on your page was, um, you know, coming soon, um, Injective and FET. So could you talk a little bit about that? Fetch AI. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a very, very exciting, uh, you know, collaboration. So basically, you know, Injective as an ecosystem, because it's so, uh, you know, financial focused, uh, it's actually one of the, um, you know, most natural synergy between, you know, the ongoing revolution around, you know, AI and also, you know, like all the advancements within LOM and the general large models out there. Um, and for Injective's case, um, uh, you know, for, for like the financial industry as well, um, AI is, you know, being like a deeply ingrained with like all aspects of uh, their application offerings and within their, you know, like software stack and, you know, TradFi and uh, CFi and DeFi alike, where um, basically like uh, the first touch point of uh, a fully de decentralized, you know, uh, AI or model environment uh, will happen on Injective as a result uh, because of the advent of all these on-chain strategies um, that are hosting, you know, like a fully on-chain model to, you know, calculate all the signals and uh, kind of bring the state-of-the-art, uh, you know, Wall Street, uh, you know, strategies uh, or, you know, trading firm technology in, uh, into like a democratized and on-chain environment. So part of the excitement around Fetch AI is to you know, uh, bring that point further, um, you know, not just uh, via, you know, Mito's open strategy, but also via, you know, different types of collaboration to bring more scalable uh, or, you know, larger models in like an off-chain or in like a, you know, asymmetrical way uh, so that, you know, like uh, they can execute or be accessed in like a permissionless and uh, on-chain way. Yeah, amazing. How exciting. So is there maybe like a timeline for this? Can you give me one at all? If I if I spoil the timeline, I feel like marketing is going to kill me. Um, you know, like no I'll worries. probably just deal to them on like at a specific timeline. But you know, it's a it's a pretty straightforward collaboration. Um, there's a lot of tools that are like naturally like a compatible out of box. So 
um, people will get to enjoy or uh, you know reap the benefits of very very soon. Yeah, amazing. So, you know, apart from these exciting collaborations, what does the injective roadmap look like? Yeah, so a lot of us have been, you know, like getting our heads down, pushing out a lot of different like major upgrades to a lot of existing tool stacks and also a lot of existing applications. Uh, but also, you know, like we have a major milestone that we've been building towards uh, within the chain itself that's going to, you know, uh, uh, kind of catapult injective into the you know, next stage of uh, evolution. So, um, uh, yeah, like there's a lot to look forward to. Unfortunately, I can't, you know, spoil the surprise on like uh, the. <laughs> A milestone until you know it's ready to show the world by a test net, uh, et cetera. But um, I think you know what you can anticipate in the short term is first of all you know uh, the chain upgrade uh, um, that you know uh, upgrades uh, injective with a lot of uh, upcoming features. It's going to show up in a proposal very soon, and of course a lot of very exciting you know 2.0 launches. We just had uh, Helix 2.0, and I think you know like Hub, et cetera, are all going to you know get its uh, very much uh, uh, a, a long overdue uh, re uh, revamp. And uh, yeah, Mito Playground is also a very, very exciting feature where it just allows everyone to, you know, bring over a token to create like a, you know, on-chain liquidity provisioning in a capital efficient way and uh, deploy on top of, you know, like a de injective exchange ecosystem. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. So was there anything else you wanted to say as like any closing comments at all? Yeah, I think if you want to like get to know more about the Injective ecosystem, definitely check out injective.com. It's kind of like the starting point. If you're looking for, you know, exchange applications, lending applications, et cetera, you can find them, you know, on the you know, application directory within the website. And if you're a builder looking to join the Injective ecosystem, um, there's always, you know, like the venture group, there's always, you know, like a different types of like a foundation uh, brands, uh, initiatives, et cetera, that, you know, you can uh, leverage and of course you know like the entire injective labs team are at your disposal to support you through the way um, and of course if you want to you know like follow the latest uh, release from the injective uh, team and also the injective ecosystem um, definitely follow like uh, at uh, injective underscore actually no uh, it's actually just at injective now um, or you know follow me like uh, at eric injective or um, you know follow what we're working on which is at injective labs Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this episode. And thank you, Eric, for your time. And I will see you next time. Bye.